Hello and welcome to Health First, the Youth Week event. My name is Faith Ganda and I am your host this evening. So one thing that I'm really looking forward to is giving out some prizes today. Throughout the whole event, we're gonna be giving out some prizes. But before we get into all of that and get off with our giveaway, so again, I'd like to formally introduce you all to this event. As we know, COVID has given us the importance of taking care of ourselves, both mentally and physically. Um, there's been a huge importance surrounding this event, and we're going to be talking a lot about the healthy life choices that we can make and stressing the importance of both mental and physical health. We have an incredible lineup of guests, and I'm so excited to bring them all to the stage today. But without any further ado, I'd like to introduce you all to the founder and executive director of Skills for Life, Chris Thompson. Hello, everyone, and thank you for having me, Faith. And this is great already. I'm, I love to see it. So, yes, as mentioned, my name is Chris Thompson. I'm the founder of Skills for Life and the executive director right now. But I'm so privileged to be here. Skills for Life is all about inspiring youth to set life skills from an earlier age. We try to bridge the cap, the gap between hard skills learned in the, in the classroom versus real life skills for the real world to help them overcome challenges and reach success. And also, which is important, is their mental health. So I'm glad to be here. And I'm glad that we're doing our second event. And um, I also want to just head it over to, this is not me doing this one. I also want to give it to Tiana to just talk a little bit about this event and how it come together and what she's planning to do for everybody. So Tiana, our staff, doing a great job. Over to you. Hi, guys. My name is Tiana, and I am the Youth Development Coordinator here at Skills for Life. I focus primarily on physical fitness and health. I'm so excited about this event. I've been working on some interviews with some amazing people and challenges and giveaways. So make sure you guys are tuning in and make sure you guys are engaging so you can win some of those amazing prizes. And today's event is all about health. So make sure you guys tune in, check in in those comments. And we're so excited for this event. So back to our amazing host of the evening, Faith. Thank you, Tiana and Chris, for joining us and again for putting on such an incredible event. I really love what the team at Skills for Life is doing. And more importantly, I love the mental health aspect because I feel like that's something that the community does not talk enough about. Now, if anybody has any questions about physical fitness or any of the health programs offered at Skills for Life, please do feel free to email the team at info at skillsforlife.ca or you can email our girl Tiana directly. Her email is tiana at skillsforlife.ca. Now, again, you want to take advantage of these amazing resources because I know this team is amazing. So, again, I encourage you all to check out their website as well, which is www.theskillsforlife.ca, or also follow them on the gram at skillsforlife, Inc. Now, I'm excited to introduce you all to our very first guest of the evening, Nikki. Nikki is a personal trainer, a Reiki master, and is currently studying for nutrition while also being a full-time mom. Okay, Nikki. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thank you, Faith. Um, so happy to have you here, and I just wanted to thank you for taking time out of your busy day to be here with us today. Um, but can you start off by telling us a little bit more about yourself and what you do in regards with um, health and nutrition? Yes, for sure. Thank you. Um, a little bit about myself. Like you said, I am a mom. I uh, have a daughter who's two years old. Her name is Mia. She might come around in a little bit. Um, and I'm currently an assistant manager at F45 in Mississauga. I also work at a holistic studio in Etobicoke as a Reiki master and a nutrition consult. Um, I'm also in school for holistic nutrition. I'll be finished this June. So it was a two-year program. It's been amazing. And on top of all of that, I also have my own business where I specialize in helping moms feel their best during pregnancy and postpartum with a combination of everything. So movement, nutrition, and energy healing. Nobody can sit here and tell me that Nikki is not a superhero. Because as she's seen <laughs> her resume of things, I'm just like, where are you getting the time to do this? I don't even have enough time to make myself breakfast. So that's amazing. Cool. Thank you for all these amazing things that you're doing. So Thank I'm you. So start off by asking you, like, can you talk a little bit more about nutrition? Um, just because, like, I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. I'm a gym head. 
but my nutrition is absolute trash. I can't separate from the bad food. So just <laughs> a little bit of the nutrition aspect. Like what are some things that we should be focusing on when we are talking about nutrition? Yes, I feel like nutrition is very, very underrated. Um, it has really opened my eyes to the powerful and healing effects of food. And I know that a lot of people say food is medicine, but I really didn't take that in until I was in school for it. Um, but I like food is simply just, it's so good for you. It can give you energy, it can help with stress. Um, it can help with gut problems, skin problems, cancer, autoimmune diseases, mental health. Like there's so many things um, about nutrition that can help you and your your health overall. But I would say the best thing, the best few things for nutrition is to try to make it simple. And when you're simple, it's just so much more effective. So having a lot of water, staying hydrated, um, having a lot of good fiber, focusing on eating whole foods, um, and then avoiding processed foods as much as possible. I love that. I love that. I love that platform right now, as you know. I just want to know what are your advice and tips on how um, they can maintain a healthy diet, but also be, you know, budget friendly, because sometimes eating healthy can get really expensive. So do you have any tips regarding that? Yeah, I think with nutrition, um, one of the best ways to have, I guess, cost effective with nutrition is to mostly buy whole foods and spend more of your time in the kitchen. Um, you're going to be spending more time cooking and prepping your food and probably cleaning up too, but you're going to be saving a lot more money and doing wondrous things for your overall health. Just because nowadays, um, they'll, you can get a lot of stuff that is already made for you but they tend to really hike up those prices um and i think that a lot of people don't realize how how good it is for your mental health too when you're cooking and you're cleaning and being in the kitchen also like cooking your food will also help your digestion and it'll speed up your digestion as well I'm learning, I'm learning and taking notes because I'd be avoiding the kitchen as much as possible. And that's probably why I find myself at McDonald's more than I should. That's <laughs> charged, okay? <laughs> so my next question for you then, Nikki, is have you always been into nutrition or is this something that you kind of transitioned over to over time? I, there's Mia. Um, I was not always into nutrition. I actually went to school for kinesiology and health promotion. So I started off with, a really, really big passion for fitness, and I still do to this day. Um, but yeah, I feel like it wasn't until after I was done school that I, I wanted to learn more about how you can heal your body with food, because healing your body with movement is one thing, but I want to learn more about the big picture. And um, as a nutritionist, we, we not only focus on food, but we also focus on lifestyle. So we focus a lot on your mental health as well. Um, yeah, I love that. I love that. I love that. So guys, I see some of you guys are commenting in the comment section. I don't want you guys to feel like I'm ignoring you because I'm not. My eyes are glued to the comments. So I'm going to encourage you guys, if you guys have any questions that you, you'd like to ask, be sure to put them in the comment section so I could ask Nikki directly. I see Claire P is saying, I always want to buy organic foods, but it seems like organic ones are more expensive. Any tips on that? Where can we find some affordable organic food? Yes, definitely. So with organic foods, one thing I will say is depending on the season, if they're not in season, um, you can actually buy frozen organic foods and they're a lot cheaper and they're actually a lot more fresh because they're frozen at the freshest and ripest time. And also, there's also something called the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. So with the Dirty Dozen, if you just search that up on Google, um, it'll tell you the top 12 dirtiest produce foods that are really contaminated with pesticides. So those are the 12 produce foods that you really want to focus on getting organic. But other foods, you don't really have to get organic because some of them, for example, like bananas or oranges, they have really thick skins where pesticides can't go into the fruit or the produce. Um, so the dirty dozen is always the best thing to follow. The dirty dozen. I hope you guys are doing your Googles. I hope you guys are taking notes because Nikki's dropping some gems. Thank you so much for that, Nikki. Um, no my last question to you would also be, what do you find is the hardest part of 
finding and balancing a nutritious lifestyle? Ooh, I think nowadays, especially the diet culture has made it really, really hard to find a nutritious lifestyle. I, I just think that there are so many different diets and different opinions and different um, different people online, for example, on Instagram, who will say you you can lose 20 pounds in two weeks or in four weeks. But there is so much more to that. Um, I also feel that calorie counting is also still a really big thing. And it's great for if you have specific goals for weight loss. But I think it can be really hard for some people because if they strictly focus on just calories and not nutrients, then they can be harming their body more than they think. Um, and with a nutritious lifestyle, it's different for everybody. So kind of working to find out what works for your body best because everyone is different. Nice, nice. I like that. I like that. Thank you so much, Nikki. I'm glad that we got some one-on-one -on -one time. Yeah. Obviously, but it was nice chatting with you. This was great. Thank I'm going to bring some additional people to this chat. I hope you don't mind. So if okay. we can bring Arani, Andrew, and Mikaline to the floor. Hey, guys. <laughs> hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. So as we all know, 2020 and 2021 have been very stressful. And again, I've been saying this from the beginning to infinity. I'm going to keep saying it. <laughs> it's so important that we have these conversations regarding physical and mental health. And it just it plays such a big role in all of our lives, yet there's not enough dialogue or conversations around it which is why I'm so happy that Skills for Life is putting on this great event. And again, thank you guys for volunteering your time to come and chat with us. So now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna introduce Andrew, who's a Canadian professional soccer player for seven years. We have some pros in the house. <laughs> okay, so welcome, Andrew. He also thank played you. in Europe, Canada, North America, and he's an entrepreneur as well. We also have my homegirl slash sister girl, Micheline, who's tuning in from Paris. So thank you so much for tuning in, Micheline. I know it's super late for you there, so thank you for tuning in. Micheline is the founder of Althea Therapy, which is a therapy platform for, um, for the BIPOC community that's Black, Indigenous, and people of color. So again, Micheline, thank you for creating that platform because that's very much needed. And then last but not least, we have Arani, who's the founder of the Wellness Project. So I'd like to welcome you all here once again. Thank you so much for joining. So I'm gonna fire up some questions. I'm gonna start off with Andrew, just because you're the only guy on the screen. We're gonna put you on the- you know, first, first. first. <laughs> so Andrew, this one is for you. What does mental health mean to you? Uh, I think mental health is very important. I think it is the pinnacle to success. Uh, I think that it goes hand in hand as well with physical uh, health. Um, but I think mental health for me, it's very important to be clear mentally, uh, to know what you want, um, what you want to achieve and where you want to go and the direction that you want to head and steer your life in. Um, I think without mental health, it's hard to, you know, figure out everything else around you and line things up in order to achieve what you want to achieve. So I think mental health is very important. Um, I think now there's a lot more awareness on mental health, um, especially as an athlete. For us, it was always your mentality first uh, before anything else. Mm. So I do think it's very important and I think it's something that uh, we need to focus on and I'm happy that we're doing this because I know there's a lot of people that you know are struggling mentally and I was there one time in my life as well so um, yeah I think it's very important very very important thank you for that Andrew I'm gonna find a question, like a follow-up question to that so you did mention that you know there was times where you're a little bit down with your mental health what were some ways that you coped with the stress or got or got over that uh, very important number one thing for me was surrounding myself with good people. Um, you know, people that had a better energy, better vibe than I did at the time, you know, that were pretty much happy all the time. Um, so for me, that was very important, just sitting down, uh, going through the people that I surround myself with, the people that I'm hanging out with, the people that I'm speaking to on a day-to-day -day basis and how their lives are, you know, how are they mentally? 
you know? So for me, that was the main thing. And then uh, secondly was every morning, just first thing when I wake up, just do something that I love to do. Could be something small, um, you know? For me, I like to drink a glass of orange juice. <laughs> like I just love orange juice. So it just makes me feel good. So I would say surrounding yourself with good people and to start your day off, just do something small that makes you happy. Something that makes you laugh, something that brings you joy, just to you know accelerate the rest of your day. So mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you so much. And I think what I really loved about the answer that you provided was it wasn't a, a major thing. It was very simple things. Um, I think sometimes when it comes to mental health, we think we need to be doing these drastic things that are going to bring us joy and happiness. Like, oh, I'm sad. Let me. I have to go do yoga. I have to go. Do yes, it's great to do yoga, but sometimes it's as simple as finding simple pleasures like drinking your orange juice. It doesn't have to be anything extreme. So thank you for that tip. I think that was really great. I'm going to fire this next one to Arani. Um, first of all, I'd like to know a little bit more about your foundation, The Wellness Project. So just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so The Wellness Project um, is a nonprofit organization based on mental health awareness. We first started off as a school club um, under Active Minds, which, which is a U.S. organization. Um, and the reason we started is because as a post-secondary student um, in university, we noticed a lot of gaps in getting the right kind of mental health help that everyone wanted. There was always long waiting times. Um, there was always the issue of just like being seen walking into a guidance counselor's office. There was always like the issue of like, oh my God, what are people gonna think? So we kind of wanted to break down the barriers that surrounded mental health within a post-secondary institution. So we founded our chapter of Active Minds, which kind of just emphasized peer support. So saying that, hey, if you're going through something mentally, you don't have to seek counseling. You don't have to go see a therapist. You don't need a label. Instead, just come talk to me. Come talk to a peer. Go talk to someone who can relate to what you're going through. So we started off as that. And then once me and my vice president graduated, we were kind of just like really attached because this organization became kind of like a child to us. So we decided to incorporate ourselves as a nonprofit organization last September. And I guess that's how we were born. I love that. I love that. Well, congratulations on taking it to the next level. That's absolutely, absolutely amazing. So I love the fact that you address the barriers and the discrepancies um, with post-secondary and high school students that they might be facing. What advice would you have to some of the youth on the platform right now that might be dealing with mental health issues but are scared to bring it to the forefront and have conversations about it? What would be the first step that you would advise them to take? Because we focus on peer support, my first advice would be to seek help within one another. I think one of the biggest issues with mental health is that people are just so scared of being judged, myself in, myself included, coming from a South Asian background, where mental health isn't really talked about. It's kind of like shamed um, in our community. So I would say really look for someone who you could talk to. I know like once something tragic happens, like people will post on their story and be like, oh my God, like I'm always here for you. Oh my God, if you ever wanna like talk, come DM me. But it's so hard to really like go out of your way and message that person and be like, hey, like you post on your story that I can message you. So like, here I am messaging you. Like it's so awkward to start that conversation, but it's a conversation that we do need to start. So like, I would honestly say seek help um, from the people closest to you, whether that's a friend, whether that's a family member, or even if it's a stranger. I volunteer as a crisis worker for Kids Help Phone. So speaking from a crisis worker point of view, reach out to uh, all these platforms that are available to you guys that are free, take advantage and just reach out for help. Nice, I love that. Thank you so much, Arani. I appreciate the tips that you've shared with us. I'm gonna take this next one to Nikki. Nikki, as we talked about, you're the superhero, Miss I do it all, okay? <laughs> so my question for you is how do you manage and balance stress? Like how do you cope with stress in your day-to-day -day life? So with stress, um, I really try to come with a morning routine lately. Um, so I wanna say maybe three weeks ago, I've started to wake up really early. So at 6 a.m. before everyone else is awake. And I just use this time as, me time to regenerate so i meditate first thing um drink lots of water just because when you wake up you are super dehydrated and then i reflect and i plan my day um, and then i also 
get a workout in. So I move my body in the morning. Um, I'm a morning person like you, Faith. Whether it's going outside for a run or a walk or I'll do a stretch or a strength workout at home. And I think one of the biggest things with coping with stress is learning how to protect your energy. Um, depending on how you are, me personally, I... I get affected by negative energy and positive energy very, very easily. So learning how to protect your energy. And um, for me, that's just having my morning routine and having that time to myself to regenerate. But finding a way that works for you is very important. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that. And I think um, what I love, the key takeaway is taking time for yourself. I always say this, we are, we're so giving of ourselves to other people, whether it's your partner, your children, your parents, but we don't realize that we rarely ever take time for ourselves. So I love that three weeks ago, you made that decision to start making time for yourself. So kudos to you for that. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah. I'm seeing some questions in the comments. I promise I wouldn't ignore my people in the comments. So we have a question here and whoever wants to answer it can take this question from Julia, which says, any thoughts on maintaining a positive mental health for athletes who unfortunately need to give up their sport due to injury? Maybe this one might be for Andrew since you're the athlete here. Sorry, I just on mute. Um, Julia, that's a great question. And I think it's a loaded question. Uh, so removing yourself from sport due to injury. Uh, injury, I think it's a part of the game. You know, it, it happens to a lot of players. So don't feel down about injury. Don't feel that, you know, you're unlucky because it has happened to you. Um, you know, I faced an injury earlier on in my career um, and it took me a while to get back, right? So if this is something that is going to end your career and, you know, um, you have to move on from sport, just try and keep a positive mind um, and try and find something that something else that you're interested in doing. Um, you can still stay connected to sport, not necessarily playing. You can coach, you know, you can uh, run camps, join camps and things of that nature. So, you know, stay positive is something that happens. Um, and if you ever want to reach out to me and discuss this, I'm always, I'm an open book to, to help you out and help you get through this, this journey. Sweet, thank you. And Mikaeli, no girl, I did not forget you. I was coming. <laughs> so no worries. Mikaline, um, as I mentioned, guys, Mikaeli is in Paris. So I know Mikaeli from UTM days. And I think um, I'd like to ask you a question regarding transitioning, because we all go through transitions and whether it's like a new career transition or becoming a mom or getting married. And while transitions are usually great, sometimes they can have an impact on our mental health. So I just want to know, as you transitioned moving countries, moving from Canada to now Paris, which is a French speaking country, how were some of the ways that you maintained your mental health and just made sure that you were able to stay afloat um, during these transitions? Thanks, Faith. That's that's a great question. Um, and I think, I mean, there's a few things. I think um, one, there's a practice that I've been doing for for so many years now, and it's um, it kind of touches on what Nikki talked about. It's my morning routine. And so I, I always do kind of these gratitude walks or these gratitude moments where I sit and I, I say out loud all of the things that I'm grateful for. And it's something that grounds me. So I have to start my days off that way because it sets the intention for my whole day. Um, and that's something I continued when I was here because it was it was such a change. And, you know, culturally everything I, you know, left my job. I went back to school, you know, and I was living in this different country. So that was that was a big thing was maintaining these positive habits and rituals that I already had that kept me positive, that kept me grounded and kept me going. Um, and I think another thing that when I dealt with a lot of stress or anxiety while I was here was um, one of the things is this, uh, it's this Marie Forleo quote that I've, that, I, it's, that I've heard so many times and it's called, everything is figure outable. So whenever I feel stressed or anxious or worried, I just remind myself that I can figure this out you know, and there's always going to be a way that I can get through it. Um, and so that was something that was really helpful, I think, in terms of transitioning um, into a new place. Um, and I think when I, you know, when you're a student, sometimes it's it's difficult to afford therapy, right, even though it's something that I wanted. Um, so I had to do other ways to, you know, support my wellness and to support my, my you know, my own self-care. And so sometimes that's 
journaling, that's listening to Headspace, you know, meditation apps. It's um, going for walks in nature. So I'm a huge nature person. So it really is being connected to the things that, that matter to me most. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for such a great yeah. answer, Micheline. I think that was really, really good. I love gratitude walks too. I think everybody should practice gratitude and positive affirmation. You got to water yourself like a seed, like you got to pour into yourself daily. So that's one of the ways that you could do that. So thank you, Micheline. You talked about therapy and you recently launched a platform called Althea Therapy. Can you please just share a little bit more about Althea Therapy, the services that it offers and the inspiration behind it as well, if you could? Of course. Yeah, so Althea is an app um, that makes it easy to find Black, Indigenous, and people of color mental health and wellness professionals in Canada. Um, it's also a resource hub for anybody looking for information or resources on mental health support and wellness. Um, and uh, I named my app after my mom, who is a director of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and has been a huge community leader my entire life. And I think, you know, watching my parents I was extremely lucky um, to be raised by such incredible parents, watching them shape the way that I view community and service. And so when 2020 happened with this pandemic, it was really just the impetus for me to take the next step, um, to find ways to support my community because I'm, um, you know, I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm an ecologist, you know, I, I focus on climate and biodiversity in my day job. And so I moved into the tech space and learned how to build an app that would be able to provide mental health support to racialized groups in Canada. Um, and, you know, to also take that step in the right direction to close that gap in terms of access and visibility in mental health support. You know, um, as some of the other uh, panelists mentioned, it's such a taboo subject in a lot of these communities. So it's taking a step to try and tackle that. Thank you. I love that. I love that. I love that. And firsthand, I can definitely attest to you and your mom just being writers for the community from the time that I've known you guys. So it's, it's great to see you actually doing something for the community. Not that you haven't before, but this is <laughs> this is powerful. I think this is gonna have such a great impact. So again, congratulations on your um, launch. We have a question here, and this will be my last question for this panel. Anybody could take it, whoever would like it. This is from Ava Stewart, and she asks, she or he, because I'm not sure, they ask, what easily accessed support systems do you know of when it comes to mental health and coping with everything that's new around the world? Well, my app. <laughs> there you go. Plug yourself, sis. Plug yourself. I love it. <laughs> no, but on a real note, on a real note, if you if you even just check out the website, um, it's altheatherapy.com. There's a ton of resources there and more of them on the app. So depending on what you're looking for, what kind of support you need, there are resources there. And even if you just need to exchange and speak to a therapist, that you know you can do that on the app, um, just to get a feel for if, if this is somebody that can help you and support you. Um, there's resources on there, personal journals, all of these um, other you know engagement aspects to, to help support you. So Really, I, I do hope that you take advantage of it and and you know find ways to to support you in your own mental health and wellness. Yes. Again, thank you all so much for sitting here and chit chatting. Everybody, I recommend you guys to go to at Skills for Life Inc. Their Instagram. All these amazing individuals are in the posters. They're tagged. So if you want to connect with any of them, do not waste time. Please connect with them because they're all doing amazing, amazing things. Um, and again, Nikki, thank you. Arani, thank you. Micheline, thank you. And Andrew, thank you so much. I know this won't be the last time we see each other, but until next time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so yeah. much. No worries. Okay, so I did mention that we're giving away some prizes, right? And I said the rules were simple. All you had to do was participate and engage. So while I was chatting with the panelists, some of our team backstage was looking for winners. So. Drum roll, please. I wish I had the drum rolls, but I don't. So the first winner for the $25 Amazon gift card is at Sun Goddess 345. So DM us on Instagram or email us at info at the skillsforlife.com or .ca. Is it .ca or .com? They'll put the link here or you can email to redeem your prize. Okay, so definitely get in touch so you can get your $25 Amazon gift card. The next winner that we have is 
at capcap.jpg. So again, you're also the winner for $25 gift card for, to Amazon. Make sure you get in touch with us so you can get that gift card, okay? All right, thank you guys again. Again, as this is going, make sure you're engaging. Make sure you're commenting because the team is watching. We have more prizes to give out. All right, all right. So now I'm very excited to be bringing on our next guest. Okay, we're bringing on our next guest. Her name is Tish Tilly from Iovate Health Sciences. Um, and she has taken a different approach to mental health in her life and health in general. While loving fitness and life, going through her own journey, Tish has over 18 years of marketing experience. Yes, Tish. Oh, yes. Over 18 years of marketing experience. And she's still looking good and young, 18 years away. She has an expertise in advertising, brand management, and learning and development. She currently works at Iovate Health Sciences as the general manager for the Six Star Pro Nutrition and XP Sports, which is eSports Nutrition. She's a fitness enthusiast and enjoys obstacle races and anything active. Without any further ado, please help me in welcoming Tish Tilly. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good evening, afternoon, if some people are on the West Coast. Yes, yes. Thank you for joining us, Tish. So for people like myself who are meeting you for the first time, can you please tell us a little bit more about yourself and your journey? How yeah, you yeah, no, I'm so happy to be here. And, and when I was asked to kind of join, I was excited because I love presenting and love sharing things because um, a lot of times you don't get the opportunity to, to talk to people who have been through the journey. Um, so like I said, a, a little bit about myself, um, you know, I've been in marketing for about 18 years or so. But prior to that, um, one of the things that I wanted to do was I wanted to be a, a doctor, right? So before I went into undergrad, I was like, I'm gonna be a doctor. I got into undergrad and I was like, you know what? I really like medicine and health, but I don't think I wanna be in school um, the, the, the amount of time that it takes to become a doctor. So I started thinking about what else could I do? What else am I interested in? And I found a little bit of a passion in marketing. Um, and so then I started working in, in marketing. Um, and so when I was probably at about my like seven year mark, I got really stressed out at work. Um, I wasn't happy. I wasn't motivated. And it was really like starting to just eat away at me, right? Like when you start to have stress come into your life, it really takes a toll on everything, um, your mood, your, your energy. So, and hopefully everyone can, can hear me well. Um, so, you know, what I tried to do is just figure out what can I do to feel better? Like, how do I change the situation that I'm in? I've been doing marketing for about seven years and I've kind of lost my passion. I'm stressed out. I don't know what to do. Where do I start? And the first thing that I started with was myself. So before I could worry about the job, because I'm not the job, I'm more important. What do I need to do for myself? Um, and so then I started thinking about, well, you know, maybe I should get into more working out. Like I played sports in school, in high school. Maybe I should start, you know, workout regimen, a workout routine. So then I started going to the gym in the morning ahead of work. And what that really did for me was allow me to burn off a lot of steam, get energized in the morning. And then I felt good. And then I ate better. So it was all this kind of like circle of health changes between the working out and the eating right that really helped improve my mood and approved how I actually went into work that day. And so that little change alone helped lift my stress. And then from the work standpoint, I was like, hey, you know, what can I do differently? Because I'm in a place and I'm not happy and I need to change what I'm going to do. And so I went back to grad school um, to get my master's in business. And then while doing that, I was like, you know, I really, really love healthcare, and I wanted to go into healthcare in undergrad. And, you know, now I'm going to go ahead and do it. And I'm going to find a way to get into healthcare. Um, and so I started talking to people at school. I started reaching out for like informational interviews with healthcare companies and just trying to find anyone I could who would talk to me so I could learn a little more and figure out how to actually break into the space. And then understand exactly like what opportunities existed because back when I was in school, even it was hard to like Google search everything. Right? So I was trying to figure out, okay, what can I do? Um, so then I ended up at a company called GSK, which is um, GlaxoSmithKline. I was doing marketing for them for about nine years. 
And they make products like Sensodyne, Tums, Theraflu, which are some of the brands that, I, that I've that um, i worked on, Excedrin, so healthcare products. And it would feel really good to be on an airplane traveling for work. And I tell someone I work on Sensodyne and they're like, oh, I love that product. It really helps with my sensitivity. Um, so I just, I, I found a passion working in healthcare because you could really start to have an impact on people's lives, um, which feels amazing because you're doing more than just like selling Doritos to, to people. You're selling products that actually make a difference. Um, and then as you can see in the background, I stayed very committed to fitness and working out. I make it a priority. My medals are back there from the races, Pelotons, pull-up bars, um, and my brand products are over here, right? So it's fitness is ingrained into what I do. And I wanted to push the, 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 the envelope and move into a space closer to my passion point. And so that's how I've been at Iovate for about the past five months, working in sports nutrition and even this esports gaming, right? So getting closer into something that's my passion point, which is, which is really great. So it, it just became this journey of, hey, how do I find what I like to do? And then just continue to, to go after it. Um, and then how do I make sure that I keep my mental well-being in check, which is through my fitness journey as well. So that's my quick kind of background on, on a little bit about me. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing. So my question for you is, what advice do you have for any youth that want to kind of venture off into these careers? Yeah, no, very good question. So what's always really good is, is, is research and seeing exactly what's out there and what it takes to get into these careers and what companies sometimes tend to look for. So there's two things that I say. Um, the first thing from a research standpoint, LinkedIn is at your fingertips. So you can type in like jobs and healthcare and you can see what pops up. Um, and then when you see what pops up, you can see what type of quali qualifications are required to get at these roles. So then you can start to understand, you know, like what it may take um, for you to break into that industry. The second thing is, you know, people tend to be pretty friendly um, from a networking standpoint. So if you could start to think about certain groups to join, um, like I joined Urban League Young Professionals at one point in time when I lived in Pittsburgh, I was a part of like National Black NBA. So I started joining associations and started meeting people who also knew people, <laughs> who knew other people, and you get connected and you start to build a network. And then you can start to talk to people who are in a field that you want to get into, or could at least, like I said, even know someone, right? So I would say those two things are things that will work really great. Easy, low-hanging fruit, go on to LinkedIn, do some searching, and then you know join some groups, meet some people, and then ask around. And I'm telling you, People in my position love talking <laughs> to people um, uh, about what they do and helping because um, you feel like you've made it and you want to have a chance to get back. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I think there's a famous saying that says it's not what you know, but who you know. So, mm -hmm. again, I, I highly encourage you guys to get your networking game up because even with job posting, a lot of companies before postings even hit the public, it's already been announced within the organization who do you know who can you refer? So if exactly. you're not getting your name out there, ain't nobody going to see you. You yeah. got to be networking, you know? Um, yeah. and I, and on, on that note too, Faith, like I will say like the importance of it, like um, my sister is a lawyer um, and at the time she was an undergrad. So I was at a networking event talking to someone who said they, was a, they were a lawyer and they worked in like town hall. And I was like, my sister wants to be a lawyer. Can I introduce her to you? And she was like, yeah, of course. And my sister went and kind of shadowed her for work one day. And you know, so so I like I just want to reiterate, people love helping. So join these groups, like ask people, meet people. You It definitely pays off. Yes, definitely. So I'm not sure if you could see the comments, but the comments are loving you. We have okay. we have crazy who said, I rate how aligned your passion is with your healthy lifestyle. Grace, who says seeing your achievements gives us hope. Sorry, senior achievements also gives you a push to keep going. Then we have Claire, who's been giving us some amazing questions all day. Okay, Miss Claire, the interviewer, I love these questions. <laughs> Her question is, it's tough as a young adult when you're not sure what your passion is yet. Me, I'm still figuring it out too, Claire. How do you go about figuring it out, Tish, if you have any tips on that? Yeah, no, it's um, it's a really hard question. And it's it's funny. It's one of those things where people like find your passion and you'll never have to work a day in your life. Right. And it's like, I don't know what I'm passionate about. Um, You know, it's a journey and it's OK if you don't really know the, the way that you 
you find your your passion is that you try a couple of different things and that's okay um to to explore some things that you're interested in so i would say claire um if you if you have small interests in certain areas think about spending a little bit more time in those interests and see if you really like them a lot or what are things um there could also be things like oh well if i think of an example of something um hey i like working out a lot but i don't think i want to be a trainer right mm -hmm. so then what some other things that i would want to do in that particular space right so even if you try these little things and you don't like them there may be certain things you like and you say hey i'm actually i am in this job and i don't really like it but i actually like you know managing projects and helping to organize people and tell them what to do maybe i can go figure out how to do more of that or you know oh i don't really like um you know kind of working at the the bank job and being a teller but i do actually like it a lot when i get to speak um to you know my my, my co-workers about you know x y and z maybe i can figure out how to do more presenting and facilitating so i would say try to do a lot of little different things and once you do them evaluate them see if there's something in it you like and then go a little deeper in that area and then you you may be able to find some of the things that you're really passionate about Definitely. I definitely agree with that point. Just because, again, the more you try things, it gives you perspective on what you like and what you don't like. And also you get to discover other opportunities that you didn't even know of. So yeah. for example, when I was growing up, when I thought of lawyers, I only thought of the ones that are fighting to keep criminals out of jail or put them in jail. I didn't know that there was like sports lawyers, real estate lawyers, there's a lawyer for everything. And again, you won't know these things unless you put yourself out there and you start researching and finding out what's really out there for you to find the the best fit for yourself. So again, exploring and getting yourself out there is key. It's key. And I say, right, like life is meant to be lived, guys. So if you're doing something and it's not working for you, try something new and don't let anyone else kind of tell you like that you shouldn't do it. You know, I would say life is too short not to be happy, right? Or figuring out what's the learning moment or the journey that I'm supposed to work through here, right? So not saying give up either, right? Mm -hmm. um so once again like i made a very stark decision like i don't think i want to be in school i'm not going to be a doctor i'm gonna find something else to do i don't know what to do i'll do business right and but i i still wish i would have like stuck with it a little bit and, and waited right um so i'm just saying you know just it's you got to focus on like what you can do to be happy if something's not making you happy and you've given it a shot and you've tried it move on and don't feel bad about it um, and I see another question, Faith, uh, that's coming through on the screen. Yes, yeah. our homie Timmy. Timmy, I recognize your name from the last event back in December. You were such an active member, so good to see that you're back here. So Timmy asks, how do you increase your network if you don't know anyone? Great question, Timmy. Very hard. So you got to get to know people, Timmy. Um, and like I said, how you do it is you start to go to events and i know in a covid world where things are now you know you're not physically with people you have to try remote things um is a lot harder but especially like let's say we get back to you know to normal and we're out <laughs> you have to make time to go to these events and try to meet people um and a lot of times you can start to meet people um or have conversations not always at a networking event but even sometime at you know random places um and you know one of the things that is to always like look appro approachable um and, and polite so it's easier to start a conversation um you know randomly and and i, I think i've on planes i've talked to people you know about what they've done i think i've been in the grocery store and had you know random conversation but i'm a bubbly person and i, I probably talk too much um, so what I would say to me, uh, give you two things to do, you know, one, try to see if you can find some type of organization that you are, or maybe like three, like one, see if you can find some organization or some field that you're interested in and see if you can join a, a group. Like, so they have a lot of young professional, um, groups as well that you can join. You could just start to meet people there. And that's a good, you know, a, a good start, um, to, you know, start, <sighs> I was like, don't be afraid to go to these things by yourself. A lot of times you feel like you want to bring a buddy when you're going to networking, but that's like your safety blanket. So then you don't go out and meet new people. So it's okay. You know, you go out and you start small conversations um, and then you start to build your network. And then, um, you know, someone I saw kind of posted on there, like LinkedIn is an, also a, a very good tool.
to, you know, look and see what they have available to join groups and to reach people and, and to meet new people and build the network. And even within the little things like this that you go to and you meet people, build connections here, um, you know, like as well, right? I've, I've been through um, a couple of different recruiting events where I would randomly talk to people who work for other companies because we're all recruiters. And every year we go back to this recruiting event and I see them, I talk to them and now they're in my LinkedIn network. And so if anything, anytime I need something, I can reach out to them. So, you know, definitely people you meet along the way, keep them in your circle because you never know when you're, when you're going to need them. And, and like I said, always try to think about how you can be approachable to um, when you're just out normally, because a lot of times that can lead to sparking some conversations, some networking, meeting someone who knows someone who knows something and you never, you never know. I think another thing that helped me as I was kind of getting my networking journey going on is I stopped looking at networking like I have to go out there and get this from said person. You actually just need to look at it like making a friend. Mm -hmm. um, take those pressures off of like, I'm going there, I'm talking to this director, oh my God, it's such a big deal. No, it's not. You're, you go you're going there and you're talking to a person. The same way that you talk to your friend Mary is the same way that you can network and talk to director Bob. So that's just my tip is just look at the individual, not the title, because before I used to get intimidated by titles. And that's what really helped me um, start talking to people who were, I guess, of a higher level. Mm. I remember being at a um, and this is random. It's probably too much information. But I think I uh, like a, a while ago, I went to like a dating mixer. And at this dating mixer, there was some like, you know, like a, a younger guy and a younger girl. They were maybe like 21 there. And I was sitting at the bar. And I started talking to them about career stuff. <laughs> so I didn't even go out and go into dating, like to do any of the dating stuff. I spent my time kind of like trying to coach and give advice on career. And I exchanged my number, you know, like, hey, find me on LinkedIn. Let me know if you need anything. And I think I had another conversation later with a younger guy that I met about he was trying to break into advertising. And I worked in advertising, too, in my career. Um, so I gave him some advice on like, here's what you could do to help make yourself a better candidate for, you know, advertising jobs. So like I said, you never know when you run into people <laughs> um, who will be willing to help. Right. Um, so so like kind of Faith was saying, you just got to talk to people like you're friendly and it could turn into something. That is facts. That is facts. That is facts. So I have a question for you, Tish. Yes. You know, the vibes are just so nice. I feel like everything has been flowing. I had a whole list of questions. I just discarded them because like the vibe. <laughs> loving this, loving the energy here. So my question for you is, I find that people don't talk enough about failures. Mm. Like you know, we all have our resumes of successes, but nobody really talks about failures. And I think it's so important today that we have a conversation about some failures that you might have faced and mm. how you got the confidence to build yourself back up and get back out there. Yeah. Oh. Man, Faith, like that's such a very good point. And even in, in work, um, we try to talk about even business initiatives you try and you fail and making sure you make those public because failure is so important. It's how you grow um, and you get life lessons along the way, too. So there's there's um, there's three moments that I'll maybe try to go through like really quickly that I think are, are, are very helpful um, from a career standpoint and how I was able to kind of get through some of the failures or challenges um, as well. So when I was early in my career, maybe I was four years out of, um, out of college, maybe five, five years out of college. And um, this is around the time that I was like really stressed out and I was trying to do a lot. And I've always been a high performer. So I've always been like just really good, right? At like getting stuff done. And even though I was always good, I had very low self-esteem still about my capabilities. And I was still very sensitive to trying to be the best, even though people were telling me, like, you're really good. So one of the things that happened is, is I was working on this project and I didn't deliver what I needed to deliver. And my manager at the time, you know, kind of scolded me for not doing what I needed to do. And so that paired with my own insecurity of not thinking I was good, even though it was like a one time mess up um, of not delivering what I should, which happens. Right. <laughs> um, I got so emotional about it and I started crying and tearing up at work um, and I didn't have like the business maturity to deal with 
this particular setback. And I remember going to my other, um, my manager's manager and, you know, she was telling me like, don't cry at work. You don't cry at work. You kind of like, you keep it together and you, you know, and then you, you figure out what you did or you move on, but you do not let them see you cry. You do not have an impact. And so that stuck with me um, to, you know, to this day, like if I get really upset at work, which you will, <laughs> as you grow older and it's okay, I go outside, I go away, I hide some, you know, I try not to let people see the frustration. Um, but that's kind of one, one thing it was a business maturity. Um, and then I, I say a second thing that happened and it was recent. Um, I was working on a launch of a product and the, the product launch itself didn't go well. It just, we had good research that said it was going to do well, but it didn't. It was a, it wasn't a good launch. Um, and so we've lost the company lost millions of dollars on this launch. So it was a pretty big deal. Um, but I learned a lot. Right. So I figured out like, OK, hey, I failed. It didn't work out. But here's all the things that I'm going to take away from this like failed launch that I can improve for the next one. And then, by the way, here's some other things that I probably could have did as a marketing leader to improve the next time I work on a launch. So asking more questions up front. So that failure, while it was a massive <laughs> blow to the company, it helped me really learn a lot about what to do next time and what not to do. And some of the personal things that I did just, you know, and I know I'm probably talking a lot, but I was upset that it didn't do well. And I felt that none of the team or the leadership team was supporting me at the time. And so I was moping around the office and I, you know, and I was just, I, you can guys can tell, right? I'm pretty bubbly. So the minute that I'm not <laughs> bubbly, everyone's like, what's wrong with Tish? Um, which is hard, right? So now people kind of looked and said, hey, I see Tish isn't bubbly. She's really taking this loss pretty hard, um, which wasn't good as well, right? So, you know, like I said, what I learned from that is of course, what to do for the business. But then once again, you know, how to manage my personal emotion when things don't go well at, at, at work and you can't pout <laughs> all the time. So it's just, that's what you want to do, but you, you got to remember you, you can't pout. Mm -hmm. No, I love that. Thank you for the amazing, amazing tips. I really enjoyed this chat, Tish. And I'm sure I'm not the only one because the comments are on fire. Yeah. <laughs> also, and like, hey, everyone, we talked about LinkedIn, you know, Find me on LinkedIn. Um, it's under Letitia Tilly or Tish Tilly. Um, you know, like say you're from this event so I can accept you. And if you ever want to talk, you know, offline or you have some questions, just feel free. Like I said, I love, um, you know, especially like younger people. Like I, I used to do a lot of things um, with certain groups. So I love helping and giving advice. And so I'm, I'm there for it. I'm currently um, pregnant and due in like three weeks. So I may not get back to you pretty soon, but definitely request me um, and I will always try to make time to to help out and give advice. Well, thank you so much for your time and congrats. We wish you all the best with everything. Now, moving on to the itinerary up next, we have another set of panelists. And again, if you guys have been tuned in from the beginning, you know that the panelists have been absolutely amazing so far. And again, I'm happy to bring on the next couple of people. So coming up next, we have Ty, Justin, Jessica, and Dayon. I hope I pronounced everybody's name correctly. If not, please do correct me. Okay, so for this next set of panelists, our topic is going to be about the one thing that people don't really talk about, which is the mental health. We're also going to talk about the physical health as well. We're gonna talk about it all pretty much. So I'd like to welcome Justin S. Washington, Dayon Harris, Ty Leg, and Jessica Nguyen. Justin is currently studying for his doctorate of chiropractor after he studied kinesiology at York University. Dayon Harris is currently playing professional soccer in the US and Ty is a former All-American track star. And we also have Jessica, who's a kinesiology graduate, who knows all about a healthy body. So again, I would like to welcome you all. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy days to join me here today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's get right into these questions. Who am I gonna start with? Where's Justin? Why doesn't Justin have his camera on? I wanna see your face, Justin. Where you at? <laughs> I'll give him a minute to join us. So again, don't let me be the only person that hogs the questions. Um, our comment section is open, so feel free to add your questions there because I will um, forward them over to the panelists. 
But while I wait for you guys to ask your questions, I'll start off with Jessica. Can you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do, Jessica? Sure. Um, hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for having me today. I'm super excited to be here and to talk about physical health and everything related to it. Um, for those who don't know me, I actually am from Ontario Tech University. I did my Bachelor of Health Sciences degree in kinesiology there um, and held a lot of different leadership roles. And now I am pursuing my Master's of Public Health in hopes of educating and promoting health so that people People can live the best and most healthy life um, possible. And uh, fun fact, I am a health and fitness enthusiast. So if you follow me on Instagram, you can get ideas for out, uh, at home workouts, um, motivational speeches, all that kind of jazz. So I'm really excited to be here. And I look forward to getting to know all of you. Amazing. Thank you so much, Jessica. We're going to go next to Ty. Ty, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're up to. What do you do? Hi, so my name is Ty Rihanna, and I go by Ty. I'm so happy to be here today, and um, I hope you guys are all having a great day. Um, well, basically, what should I say about me? Um, yeah, so I've, I ran track for eight years. Um, I did get, receive a full scholarship to Virginia Military Institute, and um, I ran cross country for four years. So um, there, I was also All-American for the 4x4 four four and the 400 meter um, dash. So yeah, track has been a big part of my life. And I'm very active and I love to stay fit. So um, that's another big reason why I'm happy to be here today. Um, and um, basically, um, track has been my life. But now that that's over, I found a new passion and that is jump rope. So I'm super um, passionate about jump rope. And I just started in January. So it's crazy. It's only been a few months, but I've gotten really good. I love to post cool videos of me jumping slash dancing on my Instagram. Um, but I definitely encourage everyone to, you know, pick up this new skill. It's awesome. Um, but yeah, as far as work, I am a client services coordinator, but I have my postgrad in um, human resources management. So I plan on getting into the human resources field very soon. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Next, we're going to move to Dayan. Again, correct me if I'm mispronouncing any of the names here. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do. We want to get to know a little bit more about you. No, you got it right. You got it right. It's Dayan. Dayan. Um, nice to meet you. Thank, thank you for having me. Um, I grew up in Toronto. Um, played for Vaughn, Missouri. I'm not sure if, if everyone knows, knows there, but I uh, played for Vaughn. Uh, I graduated from the University of Connecticut with a degree in economics. Um, I went to the draft, played soccer for UConn, and then I went to the draft. Um, got drafted 20th of Raw to uh, Real Salt Lake. I played a year for the Monarchs, which is uh, RSL's second team. And then now I play for um, Tampa Bay Rowdies. So that's a little bit about me. We got some pros in the house. We got some pros in the house. Amazing. So nice to meet you guys. Um, Justin, are you ready to join us or you need some time? Okay. Justin, we'll get to know a little bit more about Justin once he joins back in. No problem. Okay. So I'll just start off with the questions now. My first question will be for Jessica. So what are some tips on how people can stay healthy and active during this pandemic? Because as you know, gyms are closed right now. So what are some tips that you have for us today? Yeah, that's a really great question. And honestly, there's so many things that you can do. And I know I knew like when I first um, realized like, oh, my God, I don't have a gym. I don't have these machines. Like, what am I going to do? Um, and so I really had to be creative in the sense of like, how am I going to get my body like active and moving because I don't want to lose all my gains that I got when I worked out. So I started exploring a lot of different things. So um, I got resistance bands, which really helped me like kind of maintain like the tone of my body and all that kind of stuff. I have started skipping, which is also really fun. Um, recently I've started dancing a lot. I was jamming a little bit earlier with the DJ, um, but I think I danced myself out of my, the entire day. So I couldn't dance as much, but, 
Um, I find dancing is really good. Even if you um, have a bike and go biking, um, I don't have a bike and I'm trying to get one this summer so that I can go and bike, you know, like five kilometers, 10 kilometers around my town and stuff like that. Um, but I'll say that there is definitely no right or wrong way to do it. Whatever you think that makes, like whatever activity that makes you kind of come alive and something that you genuinely enjoy, um, I would say just go for it and just have fun. You just gotta explore and see what works for you and what doesn't. So those are kind of some of my tips on how you can keep your body um, moving during a pandemic. Amazing. And I think Jessica also mentioned that she posts um, videos on her Instagram. So her, her Instagram is tagged there, J-Y-O Fitness. So make sure to follow her for some more tips. My next question is going to be directed at Ty. I know you said that you ran track for many, many years, did some cross country, all that good stuff. My question is going to be, what are your opinions on a healthy body? What does a healthy body look like? And did you ever feel any pressures as a competitor and an athlete to... Um, to maintain a certain body image. Okay, awesome. Um, I definitely feel like you shouldn't judge your, you shouldn't compare your body to others. You know, everyone's different. Um, well, to me, you know, a healthy body is having a healthy body composition. You know, a healthy body fat percentage. And you know, it's about looking. I mean, it's about feeling good. You know, that's the main thing. You know, you don't want to get super tired just going up a flight of stairs. You know, so. Um, I definitely think the number one thing is about feeling good and then the body fat um, percentage, like your body composition. But in track, I don't feel as though I was pressured as far as um, like looks or anything. Um, you know, when you're working hard and you're training consistently and eating healthy, um, you're just actually you're just naturally, you know, healthy. You're going to you're going to see the results. Your body is going to be fit, you know. So, yeah, that would be my answer to that. Love that, love that. Thank you so much. Dayon, question for you, Mr. Pro Athlete. What was it like trying to make your way up to the top? What were some challenges that you faced? And what advice do you have for anybody that wants to kind of take on that path that might be on the platform today? I think you're on mute, mute, you're mute, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry. Um, I know for me, uh, growing up and uh, playing at in the university, sorry, um, for Penn State, the balance was uh, a little tough for me at times, but just finding that balance and um, finding times to, to work on things that you need personally, um, I think that's what's key in um, staying healthy and, and staying mentally and physically prepared for, for um, whatever life might throw at you, you know? So you talked a bit about balance. What would you say balance looks like? So... For call in college, it's it's tough to to balance that social and then the the, the sports aspect of it. Um, so I think for me, finding that balance where I can have fun with my friends and then, um, but when soccer came, it came time around for soccer, I was serious as well and I was able to put one hundred percent effort into that as well. Yeah, there's a famous saying that says, work hard, play harder. So I think that definitely is exactly. what he's saying. Justin, good to see you. You see, you have such a beautiful face and you wanted to hide this from us? What? Look at you. <laughs> Technical difficulties. I apologize. All good. We're happy to have you on the platform. Can you please briefly introduce yourself? Yeah, so my name is Justin Washington. Um, I'm a third year chiropractic student. Um, I originally studied kinesiology at York. And yeah, that's about it. Nice, 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 nice. So at what point did you know that this was the passion that you wanted to kind of take on? Uh, I would say that it had to be uh, a little bit later than, than most, I would say, actually. Um, as I said, I did kin at York. Um, and then as a lot of people do know with kin, it's it's like you have a lot of avenues to go, but you can't really just stop with a kin degree. It's a little, it's a little bit harder. Mm. Um, and so for me, I guess I kind of got steered this direction by uh, – one of my friends, actually, I, I talked about this in a different uh, Skills for Life interview, but one of my bosses had reached out to me and kind of said, like, what are you going to do with your life, you know? And um, he told me to kind of think bigger. And here I am. This is where I ended up. Nice. Nice. Thank you for sharing that. I'm going to come back to Ty and ask you a question. So you talked about pivoting. So you said that you used to run track. And due to the lockdown, you've now had to kind of switch over to jump rope. How did you find that? You, how did you kind of make that transition? How did you know that, hey, jump rope is something that I want to try? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so 
Um, yeah, so I ran track for so long and eventually I kind of got sick of running. You know, I was like, you know what? I need to find an alternative for cardio. So I bought a jump rope and um, I didn't really think anything into it. So I tried it one day, but after the first day, it turned into a month where I jumped every single day for like 10 minutes to, you know, an hour. And I was just like shocked. So then I just like joined this community on Instagram with um, like adult jump ropers. And like, there's so many people out there that actually skip. So it's, it's pretty crazy. But there's so many cool tricks and things I've never even seen. So I started practicing and I just fell in love. Like when you just put in some good music, like just listen to some good music and just jump and just learn new tricks. Like you just get into a zone and like nothing else matters. And it's just super fun. Nice. Thank you so much. Jessica, you're up next. My question for you is, as somebody who's, you know, taking kinesiology, knows all about the body and is also very much into fitness, if you had to pick three exercises that you had to do for the rest of your life, you couldn't switch it up, you're stuck with these three for the rest of your life, what three exercises would you pick and why? Oh my gosh, that is like the toughest question ever <laughs> because I just like love every body part. Like there's not one that I favor more than the other. Um, oh God, I don't even know. Like, does it include like equipment and stuff like that if we were open? Or yeah, there's like, no limitation, oh. anything that you want to do, but you can't switch it up. You're stuck with those three for the rest oh, of Oh man, that's tough. Okay, so definitely the squat rack, like doing squats um, with a rack. Um, chest press. I know that's not very common for, um, or sorry. Yeah. Chest press. I know that's not very common for a lot of females like me because they're scared of having a big chest, but honestly, like it's such a good feeling when you have, uh, you're able to kind of lift as much as, you know, the opposite sex, nothing wrong with the opposite sex lifting less, but it's just, it boosts your confidence. Um, and I think one other would be a shoulder exercise. I'm thinking shoulder press. So I think those would be my top three. Ooh, yeah. Very <laughs> yeah. I know that was a tough question. You didn't see it coming, but sometimes you got to switch it up on them, you know? Yeah, that was definitely a really great question. <laughs> you really tested me. <laughs> and Claire is back in the comments with the questions. Yes, Claire, we see you. So Claire had a question. Um, did any of you ever battle depression? when you graduated and had to give up your sports? I don't know if anybody wants to answer that. Again, it's an open space. As the panelists, guys, I always encourage you guys, you guys have the right to accept or decline any questions that you don't want to answer. So this one is up on the floor for anybody who wants to answer it, but no pressure to answer it whatsoever. I mean, sorry, I'll, I'll talk on that a, a bit. Um, I know for me, uh, when I was in college, again, that balance w was tough for me. So, um, it did set in where I was having a couple bad games and and I would just think to myself, like, is this really for me? And I would just get in, the, in a rut, right? And it's just, it, it's tough at, at those times, but finding um, ways to overcome um, those times and recognizing when those times are about to arise is, is I think, what's, what's key. And I think that players now, young players need to find out what those what those things are what those triggers are from now from a young age so that they could um so it doesn't hinder them later on in their career i like that i like that thank you so much for sharing that anybody else want to add anything to, the, to that question or any input maybe we can talk about any pressures um i know some of the things that we battle with as mm -hmm. youth or as adults or as anybody as individuals as a whole is pressure so how do you handle and deal with pressure justin uh yeah i could definitely touch on that <clears throat> i think that um one of the hardest things that i kind of had to realize was finding a balance with everything um so whether that be a sport or school family working out all these things it, it becomes a lot and um there's been a lot of times where i've found myself kind of burning the candle on both ends as they say um kind of trying to deal with all this pressure and i think the most important thing for me to realize was that i have to take care of myself before i can take care of anybody else and so it's like if my cup isn't full how am i supposed to fill everybody else's cup mm. and so mm. once you once you really put that into perspective and realize that if I want to do all these things and, and balance it all and give my 100%, I need to be 100%. If you're not 100%, you won't be able to give your 100%. Mm -hmm. Nice. 
We actually have a question from Nicole for you, Justin. She says, I have a question for Justin. What did you do if you ever had anybody that doubted you and your dreams? Did your family support you? Um, for sure. I was, I, I've been extremely blessed uh, to have the family that I do, the friends that I do that support me through everything. Um, but there's definitely been, I, I think, people that may doubt you. Um, and when that happens for me personally, I just kind of use it as fuel. Um, I'm a big fan of putting things out there publicly that I'm going to do because then it adds this, this sense of like pressure or urgency to do it because I already said I was going to do it. So now everyone that saw this, like you guys need to watch as I go and do it. So I think it's really a matter of taking that any negative energy, any doubters, any haters, taking that energy and converting it into something productive, something that can push you to, to be better. Nice. Nice. That's a great answer. Thank you for that, Justin. Ty, um, what hobbies do you take a part in outside of your physical movement that help you with your mental health? This question is from Kelly. Oh, awesome. Um, so one of the things that I've been doing, I'm all about, you know, personal growth. So I do read a lot on Audible, actually. So I read um, right now I'm reading a book by Brian Tracy called Maximum Success, I believe. And one's called Get Smart. So I love reading, you know, just learning and growing and figuring out, figuring out how I can be better, you know, how I can be successful. So I read and then I also have been taking up some, well, I've been learning like more recipes. So one of my recent recipes that I've learned is the sriracha and honey salmon. So that's amazing. So, you know, just cooking, reading and, you know, spending time with friends and family. That's what I do outside. I love it. I love it. I love it. So again, I just want to take the time to thank all you amazing individuals for taking time out of your busy day to sit down and chit chat with little old me with so many other people tuned in watching. I really appreciate the tips that you all shared. Um, we're going to ask Ty Dion to stay on. And then for everybody else, um, actually, I'll have everybody else first answer this. If you had one word of advice or anything that you just want to share with anybody that's on the platform, what would you say to them? We'll start off with Jessica. Um, I think my biggest piece of advice in terms of, you know, physical health and, you know, working out and all that kind of stuff, understand that, you know, you don't have to run, you don't have to work out, you should do the things that you enjoy and that you like to do. Just because someone is lifting weights doesn't mean you have to too. You got to find what works for you. Um, and I know that, you know, physical health does not mean you have to lift 100 pounds or run a marathon. It means moving your body in a way that allows you to do your everyday tasks and responsibilities. So, you know, when you go on a walk, during your lunch break, it, it's going to help you be productive. And that is good for some people. And that's enough for some people. And that's okay. Um, but and for someone like me, it looks totally different, right? Like I need to lift a lot because it is my stress reliever. So don't be afraid to explore your options and, you know, see what you like and don't like, because I can guarantee you I used to not like running and now I love running. So just keep an open mind and definitely just kind of check out all the resources that are out there for you. Nice, thank you for that. Dayan, can you please share any tips, words of advice, anything you wanna say before you... Unmute, unmute. <laughs> um, can you hear me? Yes. All right, cool. Um, I think for me and for the younger guys, I think uh, just just be, be nice to yourself. Like, I know, you can get into a rut sometimes and I know things can, you might not reach certain goals that you have for yourself, but we're all human. We make mistakes. And as long as you're learning from that um, and you're improving, you're taking the steps, the necessary steps to improve yourself. Um, I think that it will be better for you in the long run and, and you'll be able to reach more goals down the, down the line. Love that. Thank you very much. Over to Justin. Um, I'll try to keep it short and sweet. I would say that my only advice is to just be your authentic self. Um, I think it's difficult in this day and age when we have our phones attached to our hip and, you know, you go on Instagram and you just scroll through everyone's walking highlight reel. Nobody ever posts the bad times or the hard times. So I would just say to continue to push through, be yourself and, and always keep going. Amazing. Thank you so much. And Ty, anything for us? Um... Yes, um, I would definitely just say, um, be careful what you speak, because what you speak and what you believe um, does come to life, you know? 
So I just say that definitely you should believe in yourself and, you know, just be positive and say positive things because it, positive things will happen to you. Facts, 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 facts. So again, amazing panelists. Thank you very, very much. So without any further ado, I'm going to bring on the next set of panelists. We're going to bring back on Dayon, Ty, and then we're also going to add Marshall and Malika or Malik, Malachi. Sorry, you're going to have to teach me how to say that name because I think I butchered it completely. We also have Tamaya. It's Malik, by the way. Malik. All right. Sorry about that. Malik, I got you now. I won't forget that. Okay, so these next set of panelists are young athletes who have taken sports to a whole new level. So again, we welcome back Dayan and the new guests um, as well. We also want to welcome Marshall and Malik who play for the CFL and are from Walk Over Talk. We also have Tamaya who's a personal trainer, a former college volleyball star and is currently completing her master's in kinesiology. Wow, we got a full house of kinesiology peoples. I hope you guys are all networking today. So welcome everyone. Um, so you all have had to try new things to get to where you are now. So let's talk a little bit about your journeys. We will start with Tamaya. I hope I'm saying these names right. Yeah, Tamaya. that's right, that's right. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Tamaya Cooper Evelyn. Um, I played volleyball for a very long time. I played my last, I guess, years at Sheridan College where I uh, received my undergrad in kinesiology and health promotion. I am now at Western University. I'm studying my master's in kinesiology and psychological basis. So that's what I'm working on right now. I'm also a personal trainer. I work at Orange Theory Fitness. We're currently teaching online classes just with what everything's going on right now. And then I also have my Instagram account where I have lots of videos, lots of motivational things I talk about, personal things. I, I'm an open book. So if you ever have any questions and you just want to see, dive right into there. Love it. Love it. Love it. Pleasure meeting you, Tamaya. Thank you for you joining too. us today. Marshall, what's up? Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing. What's up, babe? Uh, my name is Marshall Sopo. I play for the Saskatchewan Rough, for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And I also play with my Alex and I'm also from my corporate side. I'm going to be here tonight. Shout out to DJ. Full track having you jumping all night. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Marshall. We appreciate you taking your time. And Malik, what's up? Tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah, so my name is Malik Time, by the way. Um, I play with the Edmonton football team, not called the Eskimos anymore. I uh, just got drafted last year, so unfortunately wasn't able to play the season. But um, recently I had graduated with a health science major, and um, I had a little IT background while I was in school. So I'm kind of just going that route. I'm just getting some certifications right now along with the CFL stuff. So yeah, that's a great time. We love us. We love us. An educated king that is, you know, balancing okay. sports and education. That's amazing to see. So shout out to you. Sure. Okay, so we'll start with Marshall. What are some things that you've tried since the pandemic started? So what are you doing? Any new hobbies and interests that you've taken on? That's a great question. I consider myself a job of the pandemic. Sorry, Marshall. Time, Marshall. Sorry, I hate to interrupt, but it's like we can't really hear you. So. I really want to hear you because I feel like you have some great things to say, but they, we can't hear you. Go again. No. Nope. In the meantime, while we work with Marshall to fix his sound, we will take that question over to Tamaya. Uh, so hobbies or new hobbies that I've done. I've um, cooked a lot more. Um, I would say because of being busy with my undergrad and volleyball, I didn't really have a lot of time to like really cook meals. So I've had a lot more time to do that and I actually enjoy it quite a bit. Um, and then I would also say... I've also gotten into streaming. So I do do streaming on the side as well. I do stream on Twitch, just something fun. I've always like a little background. I always have been a child who likes to play games and stuff, video games. So I thought, hey, I mean, I have some extra spare time. So I thought I would get into a hobby like that as well. And um, yeah, that's two things that I've done different now. 
Amazing. That's awesome. Maybe I'll find your Twitch. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to let us know where to find you. Uh, Malik, what have you taken on since the pandemic started? You're on mute. Yeah. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. So with that being said, I just, like I've been saying, um, I've been just picking up on a little bit of some course, uh, coding courses right now, um, working on some certs. Um, that was pretty new what I picked up some called CompTIA and then also, uh, cooking as well too. You know, I've been really getting into some salmon lately. So, you know, I've been kind of throwing down in the crib, you know, learning how to make their chickens, just, you know, the traditional Jamaican dishes. So yeah, Love that's it. about it though. <clears throat> I love it. I love that so many people are taking on the cooking. That's amazing because Nikki talked about um, the benefit. I'm not sure if you guys were on the platform earlier, but we had a nutritionist that came on and basically talked about the importance of cooking. So it's great to see that a lot of you guys have taken on cooking during this pandemic. Marshall, do we want to give it another go? Let's test your sound and see. Can you hear me? Better. Oh, everyone can hear me clearly? All right, perfect. So during the pandemic, so I consider myself a jack of all trades. So during the pandemic, I've been taking my hands and trying out a whole bunch of new things because I like to fail and try new things and fail again and see what really fits and sticks with me. So one thing I've really been trying to do is journal and read more. So one of my favorite books that I read every morning is The Daily Stoic. And well, there you go, The Daily Stoic. And this book basically has short paragraphs every day that can help me start my day and wisdom and good insight on life and how to live a purposeful, successful, and also driven lifestyle. So what kind of trying to commit everything I've read is my sports, not only my sports, but my fitness, my religion, my faith, and trying to become an overall human being. I love that. I love that. Thank you for sharing. So Tamaya, how has sports changed or affected your life? Um, so I've been in many sports. I'm very grateful for my parents getting me into a lot of things. I was in swimming, basketball, track and field, so many things. And then I eventually got into volleyball and then went that pathway. But definitely sports has changed my life a lot in a very positive way. I met a lot of friends. I know we were talking about networking before. You know, you grow a community when you're in sports. You meet different people all the time, sometimes people in different sports. So I feel like it's really grown my community. It's also made me more confident in what I do because, you know, you're just you're playing your sport and you grow in your sport and you continue to go through it daily. And then you just feel more confident at the end of the day. And um, I would say that it's shaped me in what I am today, with what I like to do in my personal training. And I love helping people. And I feel like being in my sport has shaped what my future is and continuing to go on that pathway. Amazing. I love it. I love it. Um, Dayan, what would you say um, if I asked you, if you could go back and you couldn't play soccer, what sport would you be playing today? Ooh, that's a good question. Sport. Um, hmm. Maybe, maybe baseball, basketball. You gotta pick one. I mean, two options. You I mean, I one. I grew up playing b basketball a little bit, but I'm not the tallest guy, right? So, um, maybe baseball. Baseball, sweet, sweet. Yeah. And then Ty. Now that you've experienced track and now found a new hobby that you're taking on of jump rope, if you had to pick between the two, which one are you taking? Uh, <laughs> I ran track for a lot of years and I did love it at one point, but I'm so over it now, <laughs> as I like to say. So definitely jump rope for now. It's just, it's exciting. It's new for me and it definitely brings me joy. So I'm choosing jump rope. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So Malik, walk us through your journey because you've made it to the CFL, which is like pro, you know, for anybody that doesn't know, that's football for Canada. So that's a big deal. Um, so again, congrats to you for that. But how would Thank you, you how would you say you got there? Walk us through a bit of your journey. Yo, so the journey has been crazy, honestly. So originally I played basketball before any of this. You can ask Marshall. I actually played basketball very school, you know, and um, it got to my 12th grade year where I was just like, yo, let me try out football. I've always wanted to try it out. Ended up trying it out, loved the sport. And yeah, I just had to stay consistent with it, you know, and just try to 
really put importance on just getting better at it and just being a better man every single day in the sport. And with that being said, I learned I was just being a student of the game and being a student of the game. I was in, I didn't have a lot of ego with that being said. I was just learning from other people and just being a student of the game, it really brought me far. And my senior year of um, college, I actually got, um, you know, my stocks went up pretty high on the draft and got drafted this year. So that was kind of the journey, just staying consistent, you know, and um, never really breaking. <clears throat> Amazing. I find it pretty incredible that you only got into football in your 12th grade, your final year, and you yeah. managed to just literally skip levels and make it to to professional you got drafted that's amazing that's really amazing hey, thank Marshall, you. I appreciate that. question for Took you some Marshall. time <laughs> <laughs> question for you marshall what's one trait or skill that you think you developed from sports because when i hear you speak it sounds like you're really into personal development so what is something that you really like picked up from sports whether it be discipline or time management i just kind of want to hear a little bit about that I'm, I'm definitely going to say being consistent. Consistency is key. If you want to, if you have a goal, every day you have to get 1% better to get towards that goal. If one day you don't feel like pursuing that thing, that means that thing is not big enough to move you, to get to stay disciplined, stay on the, stay on the right track for, you know, getting to that, that goal. So for me, discipline and being consistent, those are two things that, if you want anything in life, being disciplined, having a path and being consistent on that way to that path, sky's the limit for you. Love that, love that. So for anybody that couldn't hear him, he said discipline and consistency is the key to success. If you're chasing whatever dream or whatever goal you have, you can achieve it if you're disciplined and consistent. So thank you for that, Marshall. Absolutely amazing. So um, before I move on to the next segment of this, I just want to ask everybody on here. Um, so Malik, Marshall, and Tamaya, because I've asked Ty and Day on this before. If you had one piece of advice for anybody on the platform today, what would it be? Let's start off with Malik. Just be a lifelong learner, you know? Um, the greatest, they've always learned. They've always threw away their ego and learn from their mistakes. They never really watched their successful moments. You know, they enjoy those, yes. But um, you really learn in the low times, you know, and you learn, you learn from a lot of mistakes that were made. So, and it's always be learning, just being open to, to learning different things from coaches. Just never have that ego where it's blocking you from learning. And that's about it. I love it. Always a student, eh? Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. And Marshall, what words of advice do you have for us today? Well, cool. I live by personally is trust the what? Forget the when, but remember your why. So, Oof. like, <laughs> we, we live in a society that people only post positives on Instagram. Everybody got, they got that new car, and I can show you how they got that car. So, don't, don't let society confuse you about when you should get your set goal done. You don't have to be 25 to graduate from university. It might happen at 30 for you. You don't have to wait till you're 22 to figure out what university you want to get go to go to high school or 18 17 16 it might happen later for you so don't look at what your peers are doing it's going to happen for you at the time that god or universe wants to make it happen so don't rush take your time so that's why i say trust the what forget the when but remember your why Oof, that's a word, that's a word, that's a word. I'm gonna have to figure snap to that one because that was a word. <laughs> Take us to Bye. church. Oh. <laughs> Take us to church. Love it, love it here. <laughs> I absolutely love that piece of advice. Um, it kind of goes with that famous saying that goes, comparison is the thief of all joy. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes when you're checking on your neighbor's backyard, you forget about the beautiful grass that you have growing on in your own. So I love that piece of advice. Thank you so much. Those were gems. Okay, so Tamaya, did you already give us a piece of a piece of advice? Um, I, I kind of not really. <laughs> uh, go ahead, take it. Away. Go ahead. Um, first off, Marshall, that was amazing. That was that was very well spoken. <laughs> um, what I was just gonna say is, do whatever you put your mind towards. Don't give up. I know there's a lot of negativity that can be out there in the world and there's going to be some times when some people are going to put you down or tell you you can't do something or that you're not able to and just keep climbing up the, the mountain and you're going to face challenges 
And even though there might be some roadblocks, you can climb over them and then just continue to go it and you'll get to whatever your goal is. Definitely, definitely. So again, thank you all so much for joining us today. I feel like we walked away with some gems and it was so great meeting some professional athletes. I can finally go to Instagram and brag and be like, ah, guess what I did today? <laughs> so thank you guys again. I just want to commend you guys for all your hard work because I know the levels that you guys have gotten to it was not easy, but you guys did it. And without any further ado, I'm going to bring back another lineup of panelists. We're going to bring back Arani, Andrew, Marshall, Tamaya, and Justin. Welcome back. Welcome back. Long time no see. Welcome back. Nice to see you guys coming back over here. So with this next group of guests, we're going to dive into some challenges that they face during their journeys, um, just to kind of give the audience a better grasp on ideas of how they can cope. So again, welcome back to everybody over here. I will start by directing this question to Arani. What's the biggest challenge that you faced in your careers? Career or careers, plural? Um, so I graduated right when COVID hit and all my fellow 2020 grads, I'm sure could relate to uh, this problem. So when I was in the middle of graduating, um, one of my professors actually got COVID and because COVID was so fresh back then, I wasn't able to get my degree in time because he kind of just went ghost, he just went MIA. So I think that was the biggest stress for me because um, one, there was so much uncertainty. Two, I was like, it was like this one course, um, this one assignment was 60% in this one course. And like, I went crazy. Like I was crying. I was so angry at myself. I was ranting to my parents. I was ranting to my friends. Like it just felt like the four years I spent in my post-secondary just went down the drain. Um, so that is definitely one of the biggest challenges I've gone through thus far. And to kind of get through it, um, one thing I had to keep reminding myself, and I think is something that everyone should remind themselves with this pandemic is that it's out of our control. Everyone's going through the same situation. I mean, I hope people aren't going through the same exact situation as me, but, or as the uh, situation I went through before, but just taking a step, reevaluating and kind of just saying like, hey, you gotta take life on stride and just go with the flow um, is how I kind of overcame it. Um, having really supportive academic advisors, supportive uh, professors from different courses was really, really helpful for me. So just being able to kind of confide and not stress and not overwhelm myself with things I couldn't control really helped me a lot in that situation. Nice. Aw, thank you so much for sharing that. And sorry you couldn't have the graduation that you've dreamed and worked so hard for, but we're celebrating you today. We're giving you all the flowers that you deserve. Congratulations on graduating. Well done. That's Thank amazing. Um, so the next question that I'm going to direct, I'm going to direct it to Andrew. What's the biggest health and fitness barrier that you faced and how can youth apply it to their lives today? Like what advice would you have for them that might be facing the same barriers? Uh, health, health and fitness. Um, I would say just finding uh, something that works for you. Don't worry about what, the, what other people are doing. Um, find a balance health and fitness wise that works for you. Uh, I think you can pretty much, you know, eat whatever you desire to eat. You know, you just have to have limits and um, certain guidelines for yourself that make you happy and make you comfortable, both health wise and uh, physical. Um, and then also with working out, same thing. Don't put too much pressure, put too much stress on yourself. Take your time, figure out what works for you, what works for your schedule, what works for your lifestyle, and just chip away from there. Um, you know, I, I think if you set a goal, um, you can reach the goal. It doesn't matter if it's a year out or three months out, you know, just set something that works for yourself and focus on you. Don't get caught up on what everybody else is doing. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Amazing, thank you for that, Andrew. I'm gonna take the next question to Tamaya. What advice do you have um, for ways that we can support, better support youth on their health and fitness journeys? Uh, yeah, so basically I feel education is one of the main things. Educating youth on being physically active and trying maybe possibly to bring in some talks or have 
people come in and have actual conversations, bring athletes. I know when I was younger in my school, we had professional athletes come in sometimes, and that was really motivating for myself, especially being young. And I looked up to them and was like, wow, maybe one day I can be in their place. And then I played professional for volleyball. So it's really good to have older people come in sometimes, even someone who's around closer to their age as you can have those conversations. And I feel like having a good guidance for youth is a really good thing because it a lot of people look up to people. So having some type of thing to look forward to or be like, oh, I can be theirs one day is really useful. And I think that'd be something that'd be really good for youth. Amazing. Thank you for that. And I think it's amazing that she touched on basically what she's describing as some sort of mentorship. And mentorship comes in many different forms. Mm -hmm. And for anybody that doesn't know, um, Skills for Life actually has a mentorship program. So make sure that you connect with them if you're looking for mentors, if you're looking just for older friends that you could talk to. Um, Skills for Life definitely offers that. And I think it's something that we should all take advantage of. Justin, question for you now. You know, everybody always says coulda, woulda, shoulda. If there's something that you could have gone back in your journey, what's one thing that you would have done differently? Give me the hard one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I I try my best to live without that mentality, without any regrets, so to speak. Um, I think that it's important to look back on things that we've done, I guess, and, and, and take it as a lesson more than a loss. Um, but for me, I think the one thing that I would have changed or would change is um, putting myself out there more. Um, and if anybody knows me in your life, I'm, I'm a pretty friendly guy. Um, I do like to talk to people um, and get to know people. But I think that recently, especially with the, the current climate and, 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 and situation that we have with social distancing and masks and all these things, I think it's been even harder and I feel even more separated from people. And I'm just now realizing like, wow, I, I wish I had put myself out there more and talked to people more and, and, and kind of, I guess, taken the opportunities to engage with people that I might never have done in any other circumstance. You know, now I'm begging for, for social interaction. So I think it's really important to just put yourself out there. Definitely. And I think if there's one thing that this COVID situation has taught us all is we're all seeing coulda, woulda, shouldas. People that used to be homebodies are like, coulda, woulda, shoulda went outside. <laughs> you know, people that didn't go to the gym, coulda, woulda, shoulda gotten that membership. So I think it's going to be really interesting to see how the world is going to be post um, pandemic, like post lockdown. It's going to be really interesting to see how we navigate these spaces. And that's something that I'm actually looking forward to. Um, but I think when we talk about the COVID situation and the pandemic, we, we place a lot of negative connotations and we associate it with negativity. But I also feel like out of every bad situation, there's something that we can take and extract from that. And it could be a positive thing, similar to what Justin said. Like, it's never a loss, it's a lesson. The same thing with COVID. Like, yes, it feels like we missed out on graduations. Yes, we missed out on going outside. But I really think that there's beautiful things that have come from this time period. So, Arani, can you please let us know one thing that you have taken away from this time period that you're grateful for? Um, Self-love, to be honest, as cliche and cheesy as that sounds. I think during this pandemic, um, I launched a couple of different businesses. We established the wellness project. I was able to kind of focus on myself. And because I was able to take that time to love myself, nurture myself, water my own plants, um, I was able to give back to the community in a way that I genuinely would have never had the guts to do a year ago. So I forgot your question already, but I would definitely say uh, self-love was the biggest thing. Yeah, I think you answered the question beautifully. The question was, what is one positive thing that came out of COVID for you? And I think yeah. self-love was a beautiful answer. I think that's important. Um, Justin, what about you? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, I would say that for me, the one thing that I've taken out of it, or if I could sum it up into one word, it would be growth. And it's growth physically, it's growth mentally, um, and it's just continuing to adapt with the circumstances that we're presented with. Um, because as this whole thing has shown us, like nothing is really guaranteed and there's so much uncertainty. So you have to work on yourself every single day to become a better version. And that's it. Love that, love that. All right, Tamaya. Uh, so I was gonna ask Justin, 
I was going to say um, that it is very, I feel like it's growth. That's definitely been something that's been positive for me in this situation. Um, and same thing that you were saying, Faith, about, I know a lot of people think sometimes that this might be negative with quarantining happening right now and COVID, but I've always tried to look at it as a positive thing because I feel like there has been a lot of positives that have come out of it. So definitely growth for me and being able to find myself more and have the time to find myself and not have as much of the stressors from going to school sometimes, going into work, and now just being able to take it back. And I think that that's been a real positive out of this whole situation. Love it. Love it. Thank you for that. Andrew, what about you? You're on mute. Oh, there you go. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, perfect. Um, so I actually had a son during COVID. Uh, last year, September, my wife and I had a son. So for me, that was a blessing. It's been an amazing experience. Um, but personally, it's just allowed me to slow down, mm -hmm. spend time with my loved ones. I'm speaking to them a lot more than I normally would um, just because I'm home all the time. And, you know, so I think it's giving me a lot of time to slow down, you know, analyze what I want to do. I've had opportunities to read certain books that I may have never read if, uh, if this didn't happen. So um, I just think time to slow down and just sit back and analyze and, you know, see where I want life to go. So uh, it has its blessings and also the uh, the other side of it as well. So, Definitely. yeah. There's two sides to every coin. Exactly. So I just want to take the time again to thank you all for joining us today. I think you all contributed significantly to the success of this event. And um, I wish you guys continued success in your own personal endeavors. And um, again, for everybody that's still on this platform, I want to encourage you all to post on your Instagram stories, share any pictures, any tips, any key takeaways from this event, because you know we're about to do another giveaway shortly. Um, but without any further ado, I would like to let you guys know that we have a big, 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 when I say big, I mean big prize to give away. When I'm saying big, I'm talking PS5 big. And all you have to do to win this PS5, all you have to do to win this PS5 is you have to fill out the survey that we have. It's a feedback survey on this event. So please complete it. And the winner for that PS5 will be announced tomorrow. Again, it's a PS5. So make sure you complete that survey for your chance to win. I'd like to take the time to thank again Chris and his Chris Thompson and the team at Skills for Life for putting this together. I'd like to thank all the panelists that took the time to share their experiences with us today. I'd like to thank the team behind the scenes, Ashley and everybody else. Um, the DJ, thank you for doing an amazing job. And the BYSSI, I'm also going to bring Chris back um, to just kind of have a chit chat with us. So Chris, whenever you're ready, please join us back on here. All right, thanks for having me. And I just want to start first by saying great job, Faith. Always doing a tremendous job with the Thank hosting. You. <laughs> Anybody else needs a host, there's Faith, you need to hit her up. But I just wanna say I'm so glad uh, for everybody who's coming out today. The real point of this is really just to inspire you. Again, this, this time took a focus at uh, physical and mental health, but in all things we do, we're trying to encourage you to develop their life skills. These are things that are transferable in life, no matter what you're doing, education, school, how old you are, how young you are, how much money you have. You develop these skill sets and allows you to take on the challenges in life because life hits you with a lot of different things, but it's just how you handle those, how you secure and how you see opportunity. Opportunity doesn't often come how we think it is in a bow. It often comes in when you least expect it, meeting people, talking to people, volunteering with an organization, with people, uh, with work, taking on one role to get to another role or trying something new. So hopefully if everybody has taken something, I encourage people to write things down. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that we have our networking and a new age mentorship program. So it's a one-on-one -on -one pairing. You can actually apply right on our website. Um, so uh, skillsforlife.ca. And basically it's free for youth. And those who are watching this and you think, hey, I want to do this more. I want to be a mentor. You can also apply. Um, so hopefully we can match you with a one-on-one -on -one mentor. Apart from that, we have our uh, we have another Discover Your Path program, which is workshop-based. So you have some of these speakers come in and meet with you and we're developing that. And then finally, for those who want to continue this physical fitness and mental health, Tiana, who put this great event on, is leading up that part of it. So you're going to get IG Lives, challenge sessions for more 
prizes, uh, workshops in the summer. We're going to do some activities and games, you know, through this COVID to get you going. So stay tuned. And I'll say follow us. Follow our IG. Follow us on any page you want. And, um, and you'll stay connected that way. Finally, I just want to say thank you again to Faith. You're always doing a great job. I want to say thank you to my staff team behind the scenes. There's about seven of them doing crazy things, reposting you, messaging you. They're all great. And I want to say thank you to our DJ. Mega Wilson, you're doing great. You know, I keep it up and I hope you stay back and everybody stays back to hear some tunes after we end off here. So I just want to say thank you for everybody and also the city of Brampton for sponsoring the event as well, too. So I want to shout out them. But this has been a tremendous night and I hope everybody stays connected with Skills for Life.